Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I will show you the easy step for making a character art that you can use to create an animated avatar. The first part of this tutorial will show you how to create the character art. You can also export the art to another animation software to create a 2D rigging model for interactive avatar. Or if you don't need the interactive, the second part of this video will show you how to animate it with the layer keyframe feature of the Clip Studio. Let's begin with the character. The basic for making an animated avatar is simple. Split the character in two parts and move them to create the character movement. You have to take care of the area that may show during the animation. Planning for the part splitting will help you reduce this missing area problem. In this tutorial, I will show you how to plan and draw all the parts separately with a clean working process. Let's start with the design. You need a clear design for the avatar in symmetrical standing pose, straight angle. You may use the 3D head model for the face reference. The 3D head is in the material panel. 3D Head Adjust some face feature in the sub 2 detail panel. I also fill the color to my sketch to use as the color palette. Next, plan for the part splitting from the design. The key for this process are Split where it will be animated and start from the center line, big to small. On the center line, it will be face, body, and the back of the head. You may draw the back of the head together with the face, but splitting will create a more natural look when turning the face. Split the further detail around the center line. List them in the appearing order. You can see that some parts are symmetrical and some parts are asymmetrical. And you can see the part that can be mirrored to the opposite side. The body part splitting process will be different depending on the design. Now, there are three types of the part, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and mirror. Create a new layer folder for each part. Give it a clear name. Set the color to avoid confusion. I set the color by the part type, so it's easy to see how I must work on this object. Set up the canvas. I copy the sketch with the color to use at the color reference. Change the color of the sketch layer on the layer property panel and reduce the opacity down. Select the paper layer and create a new symmetrical ruler. In the tool property panel, set the number of line to 2. Enable the line symmetry and set the snap angle to 90 degree. When you draw the ruler, it will snap to 90 degree. The ruler icon will appear on the paper layer. Right-click and show in all layers. Align the ruler to the canvas. Use the object tool and select the ruler. Then change the center X to half the size of the canvas width. Or you may align the ruler with the Align and Distribution panel. Move the sketch to the center of the ruler. Some part may be not aligned to the ruler line. Go to Edit, Transform, and Mesh Transformation. I start working on the face part, create a new layer, and draw. I use the vector layer because it's easy for color filling and for the later edit, but this is optional. If the brush only works on only one side, Open the Sub2 Detail panel on the Correction tab. Enable the Enable Snapping option. 
to fill the color, create a new vector layer, and draw to cross the area. Create a new raster layer. Use the fill tool. Refer to multiple layer. In the tool property panel, set the refer multiple to folder and enable the fill up to vector part option. When finish filling, delete the vector layer for area crossing. Lock the transparent and paint the shading. When finish, I change the folder layer mode to soft light so I can see the sketch layer to work on another part. For the asymmetrical part, disable the snap to special ruler option and draw the part. You can toggle this option to use a symmetrical ruler is very comfortable. For the part that can be mirror, when you finish, select the part folder. Create a rectangle selection, cover the width of the canvas and the part. On the floating menu, click on copy and paste. Then, click on scale and rotate. And in the tool property panel, click on the flip horizontal icon. The new part will be flipped and stay on the opposite side. On some part, you may need to use another special ruler. When delete the new ruler, you may find that the old ruler is no longer works. This happens because when you create a new special ruler, the old one will be disabled. Select the ruler with the object tool and click on the small snap icon on the ruler to enable it again. When finished, select all the folder and change the layer mode to normal. There is a hard edge on some part. To fix that, create a layer mask for the folder. It will show the mask thumbnail. Use the soft airbrush. And click on the transparent paint. Then, paint over the hard edge. Next, draw the face part. The basic face structure is always in this pattern. The eyebrow, the upper and the lower part of the eyes, the iris and the white eyes. The nose, the upper lip, the lower lip and inside the mouth. I move the sketch layer to the top. Then create folders for the face structure. Create a rectangle selection cover only half of the face. Then mask it to the sketch layer. It will be less confusing when drawing the face with the symmetrical ruler. If you use version 3 of the Crypt Studio, when you create the mesh transformation, you can select the multiple points on the grid symmetrically and adjust the symmetrical part. For the mouth, I draw the line, then draw the inside of the mouth. I copy the line and put in the lower part folder. Then pen to cover the inside area. This is the basic way to make the part for the mouth animation. If you are going to export the part to animate in another software, you have to check for the creeping feature. In some software, it's easier to cover the overlap part than clipping. When finished, move the folder over the face part. Click on the mask of the hairband and paint more transparent so the face is more clear. Select all the eyes folder and make selection over one eye. Then click on cut and pass to split it. Clean up the file by deleting all the sketch layer and the paper layer. You have to prepare the file for the animation. Some animation software requires you to merge all the layers before import. But if you merge the layer, it will be uncomfortable when you need to edit the part. To save the layer, convert the folder into file objects. Right-click on the folder, File Object, 
and convert layer to file object. Set the area to drawing area. By default, it will save the folder as a new file with the same name. Let's use the quick access menu to make it more comfortable. Right click on the panel and quick access setting. The menu is in layer, file object. To edit the file object, select the object with the object tool and you can open the file with the menu in the tool property panel. When you save the file, the part will be automatically updated. I use Spine 2D for rigging. Save the file as a Photoshop document and when you import, now you can see the part is with clear name. Let's animate the avatar in Clip Studio. You can also easily make the avatar animation in Clip Studio with the layer keyframe feature. The face expression is easier to animate with the frame by frame method. I put all the face object in a folder to animate later. Select all the layer except the face. Then click on scale rotate. In the tool property panel, set the mode to skill. Then move the top edge and move back. On the timeline panel, create a new timeline with 24 frames and frame rate at 8 frames per second. Select all the layer this time and enable the layer keyframe. At the first frame, create a new keyframe. When select the part with the object tool, in the tool property panel, it will show the transform for the corner of the objects because the object was skewed before. Without the skill, the transform mode will be in scale and position mode. You will not able to adjust the corner separately. This is the animation movement I plan to make. The character tilts to one position and then tilts back in a loop. And between the movement, the character will stop for a while. From this plan, the character will move only two times. Let's start by adjusting the first keyframe. Use the object tool to adjust the pose. Start by the body and then move another part with it. Go to the last frame, select all the object layers, and add the layer keyframe to make the loop animation. Add the stop position for the movement, create a new keyframe at the frame 7, and adjust the pose. For the backward movement, copy the keyframe to frame 13. Click and drag to select all the keyframes at the frame 7. Then right click and copy. To pass all the keyframes, select all the layer. Right click and pass. Shift the last keyframe to frame 19. And the basic animation is just as planned. Let's add little physics to the animation. In real, there is inertia effect that will happen when objects move together. Let's add the effect by adding more dramatic movement to the hair and the cloth at the position where the character movement stop. When you adjust the layer at the keyframe 19, the loop animation will be broken. To fix this, copy the keyframe at the first frame and pass at the end. Let's add also bunching animation when the movement stops. At the keyframe 9, adjust the hair and the cloth to opposite side. Do the same on the frame 21. You may add more space between the keyframe for the smoother movement. For the face animation, we will animate it with the frame by frame method. Select all the layer and disable the layer keyframe. Merge the left and the right eye part back together. Creep the iris part to the white eyes. And rasterize the mouth layer. Put the layer in a folder and rename it. 
make the other face expression, you may duplicate the folder and edit the face with the mesh transformation tool, or just redo it. Here I have three folders for the face expression. Create a new animation folder and put all the face folder inside. Select all the layer and enable the layer keyframe again. Expand the face expression folder on the timeline. Right click and assign the face keyframe. And now the animated avatar is done. I hope my work process and animation technique is useful for your project. Have fun animating and see you in the next tutorial.